You probably don't need us to tell you that Mario Kart is one of Nintendo's crown jewels. The series as a whole has sold a staggering 150 million copies to date, with 35 million of those attributable to the most recent mainline installment, Mario Kart 8, which in a rather unique twist, is currently the best-selling game on both the Wii U and Switch, thanks to the Deluxe update. All of this might lead you to assume that Nintendo would have a full-blown sequel on store shelves by now, as Mario Kart 8 launched originally on Wii U all the way back in 2014. But instead, we're getting something that has the potential to deliver a more unique experience. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Sure, a Mario Kart outing that uses mixed reality technology and remote control cars might not have been the first thing on every fan's wish list, but a remote demonstration we were given this week illustrates that there's an awful lot of potential in this seemingly gimmick heavy concept. As you're by now most likely aware, Mario Kart Live hinges around the use of a small RC car which comes equipped with its own camera. This camera displays a live view of the car's surroundings directly to your Switch console screen, or your TV, as the game works docked too, allowing you to control it in very much the same way you'd interact with a virtual one in a game of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Nintendo, along with developer Valen Studios, has even managed to transfer the franchise's famous power sliding mechanic to this new setup, complete with trademark speed boosts and the like. Exactly how it's achieved this feat of engineering in a real-world remote-controlled toy is something that Nintendo's representatives couldn't accurately communicate during the presentation, but it's definitely there and should ensure that Mario Kart Live feels as close as possible to the traditional experience we're used to. A big selling point with this mixed reality take on the famous franchise is the fact that the course is located in the real world. Using a set of cardboard gates, you can create your own circuit in any room where there's enough space. While the mocked up room shown in the presentation we watched was pretty massive, Nintendo is keen to stress that Mario Kart Live is perfectly playable in more compact environments, which is a claim we'll be sure to investigate once we have the final version in our hands. Setting up a game of Mario Kart Live is reasonably simple, as you might expect from a Nintendo product. There's no game card to worry about. The software will be available for free from the eShop for anyone to download, but a car is required to actually play it. The car's camera is used to scan a QR code on the Switch's screen to link with the console, a process which takes seconds and presumably will make it easy for friends who don't own the full package to experience the game on their own consoles by downloading the free game and borrowing the car from a friend. And funny enough, the camera is also used to take a snapshot of your face for your in-game driver's license. Look at you Nintendo, simulating the fun of visiting the DMV right here on your Switch. Creating your courses is fairly straightforward too. You simply lay out the gates along with optional directional panels at the sides of the track, which help guide players around the course. And then you can use the car's view to paint the track. A lovely animation is shown of your vehicle's wheels getting liberally coated in paint, which you can then use to draw the outline of the course. Crossing the finish line sets the track in stone, and then you're ready to race. It's a fun process, which is good news because you're going to have to do it each and every time you boot up the game, as courses aren't retained after you turn the system off. The presentation also made it clear that players are expected to add their own touches to circuits to make them more dynamic. An example given was the use of small cardboard boxes, which when hit would create new obstacles and change the racing line. Once you've made it into the game properly, you have a range of options available. You can engage in the traditional Grand Prix mode to earn coins, which can be used to unlock in-game items. Or you can tackle the time trial mode, which is handy for when you have a second person who wants to play, but you only possess a single RC car. In this mode, you can race against ghost data to simulate the impression of competing with another person. As we hoped, different race speeds are also available. 50, 100, 150, and even 200 CC. With the cart's pace alternating accordingly, across all four. Younger players will probably have a better time using the lowest setting, while veterans will no doubt crave the intensity of the 150cc speed. Given that the game uses real-world carts and AR elements which only appear on your screen, bridging the gap between reality and fiction was always going to be Mario Kart Live's biggest obstacle. And from the footage we saw, it would seem that Velen Studios and Nintendo have done a pretty convincing job. 
Naturally, we can't say for sure until we actually play the game, but the aforementioned drift mechanic seems to work well enough, and the on-screen view certainly gave the impression that the cart was sliding on the track anyway. A rather more impressive way in which Mario Kart Live mixed realities is seen on a stage which has savage crosswinds. These make the cart move to one side, so the player has to physically wrestle with the controls to maintain the racing line. In other situations, a chain chomp is attached to the cart, giving it a boost of speed but also dragging it in random directions, potentially ruining your race. All of these in-game elements are reflected in the way the cart behaves in the real world, an impressive combination of the actual reality with virtual reality. Changing the layout of the track on a regular basis means you can keep the experience feeling fresh, but there are other factors which impact your experience. Races can take place virtually underwater, which alters handling, while races which are run in wet areas cause speed boost mushrooms to sprout on the circuit. On colder courses, there's the added risk of being frozen during the race, while another theme drops retro-style Goombas from the original Super Mario Bros. in your way. In addition to this, you can tinker with the way the gates behave when you're initially setting up a track. You can choose for them to offer item boxes or speed boosts, or you can even give them a negative effect, such as the aforementioned uncontrollable chain chomp or a thwomp. There's also the magic koopa effect, which mirrors your view on the course, making it harder to control your cart. Because the gates are effectively one of the main ways you can alter the feel of the course, you can go one step further and change which part of the gate offers the effect, which means it's possible to avoid a negative status change or totally miss an item box based on what part of the track you're driving on. As was the case in Mario Kart 7 and 8, it's possible to unlock different kart designs to use in the game by spending coins earned from racing. You can also unlock outfits for your driver and additional horn sounds. One outfit sees Mario in a suit of armor, while another is lifted directly from Super Mario Maker, which comes complete with a cart that looks like a yellow construction digger. Even though Nintendo hasn't discovered the magic to change up the physical RC cart, your in-game perspective shows the new vehicle, which gives the game some welcome visual variety. And before you get too excited, these outfits and carts are purely cosmetic and don't affect your in-game performance which will naturally limit the scope of Mario Kart Live in comparison to previous entries in the series. Presumably, it may have been too tricky for the developers to manifest different handling and speed stats in a real-world remote control cart. And speaking of the actual cart itself, while we're still itching to get our hands on the real thing, we can confirm a few key points. The RC cart itself is thankfully robust enough to withstand collision during races. A Nintendo representative also confirmed to us that there's no auto avoidance system in place, and any combination of cards can be used in a multiplayer race. Up to four people can take part, and you can have four Marios, four Luigis, or any combination of the two. We would hope that Nintendo was planning to release more carts in the future with different characters, but for now all we have is these two. It was also illustrated in one video that uneven floors or wooden floors with rugs aren't an issue and can actually make the experience more challenging. Sadly, we weren't able to get solid answers on battery life or range, but we can confirm that outside of its internal motor, the car itself is totally silent and doesn't emit any noise during play. It's also charged using a USB-C connection, just like the standard Switch Pro Controller. Because we weren't able to go fully hands-on with Mario Kart Live, we're going to reserve judgment on its ability to completely live up to the promise of mixing real-world carts and the virtual worlds the franchise is famous for. We still have questions on how closely the handling matches that scene in the mainline game, and how well the setup works on rooms that are totally carpeted or don't have a lot of space for twisting bends or sharp turns. All of these points will be answered fully when the game is safely in our hands, but what we can say at this stage is that Mario Kart Live has us both intrigued and excited. This is pure Nintendo, mixing toys with games in a way that few other companies seem to these days. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit launches on Nintendo Switch on October 16th of 2020. And make sure to subscribe to Nintendo Life and keep your eyes on our website to catch our full review when it goes up later this month.